Welcome to this brand new day. This day has never been lived before. It's the Halloran Hilton Hill Morning Show. Welcome to Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. These are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. I'm glad you've joined me. This is the first of a series of broadcasts about possibility. I was doing Leaders Week on my radio show and we had nine guests. Together they had less than $50,000 to start with and a couple of decades later they were producing in excess of ten and a half billion dollars. It dawned on me at the end of that series that anything is possible, that we live in a region full of gifted and brilliant and talented people, and that our community will be better and brighter if they bring their brilliance to this marketplace. My purpose in these broadcasts is twofold. Number one, to encourage you to live your best life, but secondly, to celebrate our region. We have a region filled with incredible stories, and on this inaugural broadcast, it brings me great joy to welcome to our program today, Pat Summit. You're a champion. Thank you for joining us today, and I can't wait for you to hear the story how, of, of how she went from the farm to becoming a field general and leading one of the greatest basketball programs in America. So stay tuned. We are beginning anew with a brand new program called Anything is Possible, and we'll be back with the story of Pat Summit in just a moment. Welcome to this edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. These are great stories about great people who prove with their lives conclusively that anything is possible. I am a, a fan. There are several people that I've met throughout the course of my career that inspire me. Probably none more than my guest today, Pat Summit. Uh, we live in a city of champions and she's brought us many championships and she's taught us all what it means to be a winner. And Pat, welcome to the broadcast. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Well, I, I was just figuring the other day, I've known you now for about 13 years, but you've been over at the university, I guess, going into your third decade. So you've been around a long time, and it's an honor to have you on the program today. Thank you. It's been great to be a part of the university and a part of this community. I challenged you to a game of basketball a few years ago, and we never got to play that game of basketball. And I was wondering if that was because um, you were a little intimidated by me. And we, can we talk about that? Yeah, you know, you can tell that I backed down from competition and I just thought you might just overwhelm me. Well, I just wanted to say to you today, it's okay. It's well, okay to you. be afraid. Thank you. You can feel those emotions, touch those emotions, and it's okay. But you'll have to admit you were relieved when I wouldn't <laughs> play you, right? I, I was relieved. <laughs> Let's talk about Pat Summit, the farm girl. Because when I see you on the floor coaching, for me, and, I, and I'm biased, but the most powerful women's basketball program in America, I don't see a farm girl. What I see is a field general. And how do we make it from farm girl to field general? Well, I think the fact that I grew up on a dairy farm, uh, actually uh, slept, uh, we had a log cabin was our home, and I slept in a baby bed till I was six. When I got out of that baby bed, I said, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And the discipline, the work ethic, uh, parents that really taught us valuable life skills uh, influenced the direction that I've taken in my life. And I just knew then with three older brothers, if I could survive that and milking cows every day. You know, cows don't take a day off, Halloran. Uh, every now and then we get a day off. Not, right. not very often, but um, just... Um, to commit to something and to commit to it every day. And I think that's what you see. I think you well, see someone that's gone through that type of life and that's the way I think you live life. So you, so, so you are commitment driven because of the environment you grew up. Uh, farm is about commitment. If you're gonna have crops, you have to be very committed. If you're gonna have dairy cows, you have to be very committed. Were you taught verbally about commitment or did your parents just put commitment on display and so, and so that you absorbed it from being in the environment? 
I think my parents gave me two excellent examples of you can do anything you want to do. You can have limited resources and find a way to be successful in life because it's about work. And, and I knew it was going to be hard. They taught me that life's not easy. It's difficult. It's challenging. But it's doable. You can do it. And they showed me by example. And what better examples to have than two people that you, know, you love and admire and now more than anything, I respect them. Did you like it when you were going through it? Oh, absolutely. Complained all the time. Did you? <laughs> you know, my 16th birthday party I missed because we had a forecast for rain. You know, farmers get up early in the morning. They watch 10 o'clock news over in uh, Middle Tennessee, and, and they plan their day. And um, I had planned to, to go to the country club. I never got to go to the country club very much. And um, we uh, there was two of us celebrating a birthday there, and I was going to meet up with all my classmates. And my dad goes, no. No, we have a thousand bells of straw on the ground. You're going to drive the tractor. <laughs> I remember being so mad, Howard, and I now, was. Uh, now, did you have the kind of father that you could show your anger to? Oh, absolutely not. So, so no. you you grinned and and you. Well, I just I don't know that I grinned, but uh, I went forward with what I had to do, and that was what I was expected to do, and I knew that was the. Now, now when he said no, how did he look at you? Did he look at you the way you look at your players when you say no? Exactly. Is that where that comes from? Is this, said, are those your father's eyes? No. We're going to work. we got a job to do. And I said, yes, sir. So you make it through your 16th birthday without doing your birthday party at the country club, and I guess you absorb some of the, the fire and intensity from your father. Um, did you like him growing up? Because there's a difference between liking somebody and loving them. Did you like him? I like my father. I no. love my father. I just... I, I know you like him and you love him, but did you like him then? Yes. Okay. I yes. just... Okay. I liked him. Um, I liked him and, and I admired him and, and I loved him, but he couldn't tell me he loved me and I couldn't tell him I loved him. Why not? Why was that... That... We just didn't do that. We didn't talk about, you know, I love you. Uh, what you say to your kids and, and what I say to, to Tyler every day. But I knew he loved me. I knew he loved me. I mean, did you want him to say it, though? Sure. Sure, I wanted to hear it. And, you know, it, it, it took me uh, about 30 years to, to, to hear it, but that was okay. When we take a break here, and I want to talk about coming from the farm to running a small program at the University of Tennessee. And I want to ask you a little bit about where you thought you were going to end up. Pat Summit is my guest. You're watching Anything is Possible. And I think you already see this is going to be a great show. And Anything is Possible. We'll be back. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. These are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible, and my guest today is Pat Summit. Now let's talk about going to UT and, and, and building the program, because when you started out, there was nothing there. You were young. Uh, how old were you? Actually, I was 22 years old. I had four seniors that were 21. Um, it was just uh, timing. It was great timing for me. Why did they believe that a 22-year-old could build a program? Or did they just kind of say, well, we need somebody to do this, and you're the closest one? Well, it wasn't like they were going to pay me big bucks. Right, right. Let's face it, Howard. <laughs> I went there on a uh, graduate assistantship, and uh, I had just graduated from UT Martin. It asked me to come be the assistant to Margaret Hudson, who was a head coach. A couple weeks later, they called back and said uh, that Margaret's going to work uh, on her doctorate, so she's taking a sabbatical. and will you take the head job? And I, I was scared, I'll be honest with you. I, I had no preparation. I'd never run a practice, never coached a day in my life. And I felt like I needed some time to think about it. But then, what an opportunity. You know, that's about believing anything's possible. Because it is. And I had an opportunity. And if I don't take that, I mean, I'd been to the University of Tennessee, played volleyball when I was at Martin. The campus seemed you know, like a city to me. Uh, and now here I am going in and becoming a head coach. Um, I'm just glad that I had the courage. I think you have to have the courage to step out and do things that are out of your comfort level or maybe people say you're not qualified to do, but you figure out a way to get them done. Are the Lady Vols one of the preeminent programs in America because you plan for them to be that? 
or are they one of the preeminent programs in America because um, that is the fallout or that is the residue from giving your best every day? They are the best because we recruit winners. I don't care how talented Pat Summit might be. I learned from my parents, you surround yourself with winners in life. Winners are talented assistant coaches. Winners are talented student athletes. And then you teach them and you work with them every day and you try to bring out the best in every person you come in contact with. And I think you have to be the example for them and you have to set the bar. How do you do that? How do you, how, how do you lay out an example for people to follow? Because I guess a couple of things come into play here. If you're leading people, number one, and, and you want to, to perform at a very high level, you can't be intimidated by talent. Right. Right. You've you got to be willing to have people around you that are smarter than you and better than you. But then you also have to be the pace car, if you will, for what goes on there. How do you set the pace? What are, what are the... What are the signals you send with the way you do your day that let people know this is serious and we're going to be at this level? What are things you think you have to do every day to lead? I think, first of all, that you have to understand as a leader, as a person in charge, there is no job too small or too big. I'll do anything. If that means I have to, uh, you know, to sweep the floors or clean up the locker room or set up the chairs, which I had to do when I, when I first arrived at UT, I'll do that. I will lead by example. You may beat me, but you won't outwork me. I never want our assistants or our players to think that coach is not into it as much as we are. There's no shortcuts to success, but I'm going to work every day, and I'm, I'm going to show them how committed I am. Say, for example, in recruiting. You know, I hire some of the best people in the business to come in and help us recruit the top student athletes in the game. But they know if I ask Coach to write a letter, to make a phone call, to get on an airplane, the first thing she's going to do is say when and where and let's go. Wow. All right, we need to take a, another short break. When we come back, I, I have some questions, some special questions that I've been dying to ask you about winning and losing. And I want to know about the most significant leadership challenge you faced and how you overcame that. Folks, you're watching Anything is Possible. I'm Haller and Hilton Hill. And if you don't know my guest, I don't know where you've been hiding. Hey, we'll continue our conversation with Pat Summit in just a moment. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Haller and Hilton Hill. And my guest today is Pat Summit. Let's talk about leadership challenges. What is the most significant leadership challenge you faced and, and how did you resolve it? Well, obviously it's assembling a group of extremely talented people and trying to get them to have a team ego hmm. and understand it's all about the team and we do things for the good of the team. And how I think you can best resolve any problems you might have or conflict is role play. You're good at some things, I'm good at some things. Let's play to our strengths, but we have to play together. You know, you, you don't play basketball alone. Hmm. Uh, and and yet a lot, a lot of the people we recruit, they're accustomed to taking 25 shots a game. And now you tell me I get four? Come on, coach. But it's understanding that you can do other things other than score points to help us be a great team. And then you become a great team player. Do you have to be a good follower in order to be a good leader? I think you have to understand, yes, the role of a follower. And, you know, I, I know for me growing up, I, I, wa I wasn't born a leader. Neither were you. We uh, followed other people. But the one thing that I was always told from, from my parents is understand it's important who you follow hmm. because you win in life with people, good people. That, that, that's strong. All right, this is my show so I can pull out my piece of paper. I got some questions here. Uh oh. All right. How much does losing hurt and where does it hurt? And I mean physically, where do you feel it in your body? Now, when I lose or things don't go well, I feel it right here in my chest. How much does losing hurt? Uh, it, it hurts and it hurts me 
all over. I mean, is there a place you feel it first, though? Um, I just feel sick inside. I just, do you feel I queasy ache. in the stomach? I d well, I do. I do mean, you? Typically, Halloran, I've gone to bed for two, three days. Keep my pajamas on. Don't go out of the house. Well, neighbors have seen me in my PJs occasionally. Um, you know, I don't want to be selfish uh, with, with the family. I stay away from the team, typically. Um, I just hurt because, I, you know, I always can look back and say, what if I had done this? Or what if we had manage this situation better. Maybe we could have won. So you feel responsibility? Oh, tremendous responsibility. I mean, our loss at uh, in Atlanta in the championship game, I, I hurt so much for our players because this is one of the most enjoyable years of my career in a long time. What does winning feel like and where do you feel it? I feel it all over. Do you? <laughs> I do. I love it. Uh, it's... um. Does the uh, hair a, stand up on the back no, of your arms? No, it's just a it? sense of satisfaction and, and a great feeling for the people that made it happen. Um, I, I feel really um, inspired. Um, I, I feel excited are for, you, for the players. Are you happier for them or for you? Oh, for them. So it's like this. When you lose, you ache, and you feel personally responsible for losing. But if you win, you are scintillated. You're sizzling like an isotope but it's because of what they're feeling as a result of this team effort. Yes. So you don't want responsibility for that, the winning? Well, in both cases, it's about them. It's about them. I mean, if you coach and it's about you, you shouldn't be in a leadership role for young people because you're teaching them about the value of teamwork. And I'm part of their team. I'm part of their team. What I want to do as a leader is get them to take ownership, but ultimately winning and losing um, I just hurt for them or I'm proud for them. When you lose, do you want to be quiet or talk? Uh, initially, I just want to talk. I want really? to talk. I want to go back and watch the tape. I, I, I got to see it. I got to, I got to process it. I got to get it out of my system. Um, like the championship game, I, watched, I had to watch it three times. And the other morning, I, I turned it on, and, and I was working out, and I thought, forget it and move on. Mm, that sounds like my grandmother. All right, here's one. Um, have you proved, have you proved everything you wanted to prove to your father? Probably not because he hadn't told me. Maybe he wants another championship or something. What do you think? What's left? My dad, is, he's very proud. Um, I'm sure he sees a, a lot of himself right here in his daughter. I was his fourth son, actually, <laughs> but he's proud of me, and I know it. And um, he really, Howard, wanted me to retire in 84, and I came very close because I coached the Olympic team, and our Tennessee team had played in the national championship game and actually competed with Southern Cal to the last five minutes. Had we won that game and won a gold medal, in my mind, I decided I would retire. I am so thankful I didn't, and I bet my father is too. What do you think? I bet he is. Let's talk about Tyler and RB. Um, you think Tyler is going to grow up wanting to prove stuff to you? I think Tyler wants to be his own person, but I think he, he, he really, like most kids, he wants the approval of those that he loves. And so he wants me to work with him. I, I go out in the afternoon, and we work on his game. And when I say great job, I mean, you know, he'll say, thanks, Mom. Hmm. So, yes, um, academically, well, I'm very proud of what he's doing, and, and he's very committed. He's probably more serious about his academics than I am, but that, that goes back to R.B. You know R.B. Yeah, R.B. is something else. Why don't you talk a little bit about R.B.? Because he has this special grace. Um, I, I think it's so powerful when you meet somebody that's willing to, to support you and living authentically and being who you are. And Particularly a man yeah. supporting a woman. And and that's got to that's got to thrill you that he that he has not stood in the way of your success but actually has poured himself into you to enable that success. Well, he's he's very secure in, in who he is and what he does. I think a lot of that comes from his mom, um, May Summit, who reminds me a lot of my mother. And she was a very strong woman. 
and, and I think he had a role model to know that, you know, my mom is talented and she's strong. And I think he wanted to marry someone like that. And I'm, I'm just excited it was me and, and to, to know that he is a big fan. He loves the team. Um, he obviously has to make sacrifices uh, because of my schedule. Um, but he's just been, you know, he's been a great friend and he's been a tremendous supporter um, and a great husband and a great father. Yeah, that's awesome. It is Pat awesome. Summit, thank you for spending this time with us today. Thank this you, was a, This was a real treat. And, and like I've always told you, uh, you've, uh, my encounters with you have always left me wanting to be a better person. Well, I should tell you how much I respect you and you've inspired me. And thanks for having me with you. Thank you. That's this week's edition of Anything is Possible, and I hope you enjoyed it because I did. Um, I don't know if I'll ever play Pat in basketball. Given the intensity of this interview and seeing her look at me this close, I can see. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Anything is Possible.